good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here on this very special day. Um, for some of you may know and some of you may not, but last month the LPGA launched um, its new brand positioning that we like to call Drive On. And these two special women that I have here with me have been a big part of that. And so first off, I want to introduce who is joining me up here on stage today. The woman who has really led the LPGA through this brand positioning, our Chief Brand and Communications Officer, Roberta Bowman. Good morning, all. And the person who is very familiar in this area, um, LPGA Tour winner, Azusa, California native and USC alum, Lizette Salas. Hello. <laughs> Well, Drive On is very near and dear to our hearts, to everyone here at the LPGA, including these two women. Um, but to kind of introduce everybody to Drive On a little bit more, I really wanted to welcome our commissioner by video um, to explain a little bit to everybody about what Drive On is. Recently, there's been a lot of discussion about diversity and inclusion, women's empowerment, authenticity, individual leadership. At the LPGA, we are excited to see governments and businesses and associations all around the world embrace these important social issues. But at the LPGA, these things have been part of our DNA for 70 years. You see, at the LPGA, we're a living, breathing example of these important topics. Our athletes don't have multi-million dollar contracts with option years and no trade clauses. They're independent, successful businesswomen. They run their own businesses, hire and fire their own teams, these athletes are moms. These athletes are kids. They come from all over the world in every shape and every size. Now I get it. They probably don't look like, walk like, talk like your stereotype of what a leader should be. And you know what? That's okay with them. They know the difference they're making is on the next generation, the young ones that watch them and are inspired by them. Understand this simple fact. More companies have joined the LPJ in the last few years than at any time in our history. More businesses are joining us now than ever before. Why is that? I'm sure they love the talent and skill these professional athletes bring to the golf course. But what's really clear is they, they love and, and respect what these athletes represent and how they impact so much more than golf. When you see the LPGA, you might just see great golfers. But don't be surprised if your young daughters and sons see so much more empowerment, individuality, role models. We felt it was time to position our unique group of athletes, teachers, and leaders exactly as they are, standing on the shoulders of the women who came before them and fully prepared to put the future on their shoulders. I hope you enjoy the LPGA repositioning that we call Drive On, because for 70 years, women have been driving on to create greater opportunities for the women that will follow them. To our incredible sponsors who saw these qualities in us, maybe before we did. To our global fans that have helped spread the word and change the face of leadership worldwide. And to our amazing athletes and teachers who inspire us. And more importantly, they inspire the generation that will follow us. To all of you, we have two simple words. Drive on. Well, Roberta, Mike did a beautiful job there of, of explaining a little bit more about Drive On. We're excited today because we're launching the second spot of this campaign, but a month ago we launched the first. Tell us a little bit about kind of the reaction and how that really went over with what the LPGA launched. Yeah, th thanks Kelly and good morning everyone. Every brand refresh needs a centerpiece. And for us it was a 45 second film called This Is For Every Girl. It was a different kind of piece than the LPGA had done in the past. And our goal was to attract viewers and interest outside of our hardcore golf fans. So we did a piece that rang true to who we were as athletes and who we were as women as well. So without further ado, let me share with you that 45 second piece, This Is For Every Girl. This is for every girl who's ever been laughed at or told she doesn't belong. This is for every girl who's been told she's too loud, too quiet, too this or too that. This is for every girl who thinks her body isn't good enough. 
This is for every girl who feels she doesn't fit in. This is for every girl who's been told that success and kindness are two different things. This is for every girl who's been told to give up. This is us crushing it for you. So you can crush it for the next girl. So as we said, we launched this on March the 20th and took a uh, brave step into the world of social media. We didn't know quite what to expect. Our expectations were very high, and frankly, the results exceeded our expectations. We had interest uh, well beyond the golf community, well beyond sports, and obviously well beyond women and girls as well, which was exactly what our goal was. And since March the 20th, the most common question that I've gotten is, what next? When we were working with our creative partners, all of you worldwide, uh, they, it was an all-female creative team. None of them were golfers. So part of their learning curve was to learn about the LPGA. And the very first story that I shared with them was Lizette Salas's. We wanted to finish this piece to launch today because this is Lizette's community. You are her community. So I'm very proud to share the world premiere of our next drive-on spot. Where I come from, people don't expect much of, of the person, especially a young Latina. There are countless times where I was told that I wasn't gonna make it, or that I was gonna get my hopes up, because according to them, Mexicans don't play golf. But I just have one thing to say to them. They do now. say every time I look at that ad I want to see it again so if you'll indulge me let's roll it again we have a modestly different version where I come from people don't expect much of, of the person especially a young Latina there are countless times where I was told that I wasn't gonna make it or that I was gonna get my hopes up because according to them Mexicans don't play golf but I just have one thing to say to them They do now. <laughs> Lizette, first off, congratulations, because it is just so amazing to see that story being told to the world that so many of us here at the LPGA have had the benefit of knowing for a long time. But I know that speech is actually from your 2011 USC graduation when you really shared your story to a broad audience for the first time. Yeah. Can, can you take us through, that was just a little snippet into who you are and, and the story to get here, but take us back through how you even got to that graduation stage and, and how you got to be a professional golfer. Yeah, um, first of all, thank you all for coming. Um, as you may or may not notice, that voice, my voice was cracking. I was so nervous, I was terrified because that was indeed the first time I really shared my true story with everyone. And I felt like that was the perfect time. Um, I was on the USC golf team and the athletic director at the time, Pat Hayden, um, asked me to do it. He knew my story, he knew all the struggles that my family had gone through and he thought it was it was perfect for, for that type of ceremony. And so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how everyone was going to react. But I knew that my story is what USC represents. Um, USC gave me the, the opportunity to overcome obstacles, to um, get an education, and to really um, mature as a woman, as an athlete, and um, I mean, as a student athlete, actually. Um, my entire family was there. The entire student, athletic student body was there. I, um, it's a, I'm still shaking thinking about it. Um, it was just a pivotal moment in my career, my young career. Um, 
and shortly after I turned pro. Um, but just looking at my mom and dad in the crowd and just, we did it as a family. And my goal was to get a degree. And I didn't, I didn't really think about the four-time All-American, the two-time Pac-10 Player of the Year. I didn't think about that. I just thought about what it took to get to that point. Um, there's a lot of no's that you shouldn't do this or why are you doing this? And, you know, looking at my parents now, like, that's the reason why I did it. And, you know, my two nephews right here, they're the reason why I keep doing this. And, you know, for other, and also other young girls and boys who um, have gone through similar situations and have, I don't know, it's, this has all been just a dream come true for all of us. And to now be on this platform that Roberta has given me um, and the LPGA, I'm just so forever grateful. And to be the, the second video for Drive On um, is really quite special. And you know, at USC, we have the phrase fight on. And I think that resonates, or both phrases resonate with me and my family. So um, you know, my parents didn't come didn't come to this, didn't, they didn't come to this country with much. And, um, you know, I do, I do all this for them. And, um, yeah, I don't want to cry, so I'm going to stop at that. <laughs> May I just use my prerogative? And we've got Lizette's family here and her very close friend. Could you just stand for us to appreciate your role in Lizette's story? <laughs> Um, Lizette, you know, you talked a little bit about kind of that journey. Take us back to when you first learned to play golf and when you started. And I know you're the youngest of your family yeah. and the only really big time golfer. So take us the through. The only golfer, period. <laughs> <laughs> so take us through. What was that like? Kind of how um, did you get started and how important? I know your dad played such a huge role in that. Yeah. So I believe my my story started started before I was even born. Um, both my parents are immigrants from Mexico. My dad um, has worked at a golf course as a mechanic since 1970, what, five, eight? One of those times. And, um, you know, he just really was interested in the game, had no background in it whatsoever. And I was seven years old, and he asked me if I wanted to go to work with him. I kind of had an idea what he did, but I didn't know where he did it. And so, um, you know, I stepped foot on the range and handed me a golf club, which he probably made himself, and um, just started swinging. And his friend was the head pro at the time, comes over, I get introduced, and he asked if I would like to get a lesson. And I'm like, sure, okay. And my dad was, you know, he wanted to, but he knew that golf is very expensive and he's like well we'll think about it and the instructor said we'll, we'll figure something out later down the line I realized my dad was doing side jobs for him whether it was yard work or fixing his car like he did whatever he could so that I could get to the course every Saturday and from then we I just started playing for the club and I remember this really distinctively because as a kid, I was always put as an alternate, even though I was better than most of the kids. And, and we would always fight to just get on that team as a seven, eight-year-old. And I think that really prepped me for what I was going to go through in life. And um, you know, I played on the high school boys team because my high school didn't have a girls team. Um, I really didn't get on the the major junior golf stage till I was about a junior in high school. Um, USD was actually the last phone call I got on July 1st. And I didn't even know I was good enough to play at USC. And my mom had sleepless nights because I wouldn't call the coach back. It was just, <laughs> JS knows this too, um, which I almost let slip away because I was too scared. Um, but. For some reason, my parents knew that 
this was something that I was meant to do. And so I received a scholarship from USC. After I graduated, my dad and I hopped in a truck, in his truck that he still has till today, and played on the Symmetra tour. Uh, he worked as my caddy. Um, it, was, it was tough. Um, but looking back at that, I uh, realized that that was a path I was always meant to be on. And now being on this stage and being on the LPGA, um, I cherish all the little things and um, I want the journey for the next girl to be better than mine. Roberta, you've talked about how Lizette's story inspired you even before you ever were associated with the LPGA and how important it was when you spoke with Ogilvy Worldwide and when we really were developing Drive On. What does it mean to you now to see this spot and to see Lizette's story come to life for so many? It's a beautiful moment. And the privilege that I have working with the LPGA is uh, Lizette is extraordinary. Every one of our athletes has their own story and their own journey and the own, their own hardships that they have overcome. And what we want to do through Drive On is to introduce those athletes and those stories to the rest of the world. Um, Lizette said it well, the professional sports gives you an extraordinary platform and spotlight. And at a time when I think uh, young girls in particular need role models, I think we've got 144 teeing it up every week. So it's been, it's been just such a privilege to just begin this series and I have to say, we are, we are going to profile the other golfers that were in that drive-on uh, film. They were all selected and cast because of their backstory. So I think you will all get a measure of the richness and the character and the dedication that it takes to be an elite golfer at the highest level. But more importantly, you'll get a window into their character and into their leadership. And I, I think you'll be as proud of them as, as I am. I want to open it up. We really want to have a conversation today as we talk about Lizette's story. So if anyone has a question out in the audience, please raise your hand. We'll have a microphone that can go around um, to anyone who has a question. So please don't hesitate as I ask, because I'll definitely have lots of questions for, <laughs> for Lizette. But my, my next one, Lizette, is really, as you watched that, and you were talking about the emotion in your voice and, and standing on that stage and what that meant at that time, when you now look at and seeing yourself as one of the representatives of the LPGA, that your story really represents what it means to be on the LPGA, what do you think that young girl who's standing on that stage would have thought of this moment today? Um, I would say that the journey and the struggle was all worth it in the end. Um, I know, I knew as a little, I remember as a little girl wanting to quit and wanting to, to be normal. And later down the line, I realized that this is my normal, that this is what I was meant to do. And the drive that my parents have um, to have a better life for their family, I think really resonated with um, with me and my siblings. Um, so, you know, and I, we took this journey as a family. Um, you know, golf is very, uh, an individual sport, but really, they are my backbone. They, you know, driving me to practice, driving me to everywhere, clinics, lessons, everything. They are the reason I'm up here. And, um, I mean, I could, I could talk so much about them and how I'm so thankful, but if I were to tell my young self, um, you know, you're, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it in the end, and, you know, share your journey and so that you could drive on for the next girl. <laughs> when we were in Phoenix, too, when we debuted Drive On, we had a nice panel, and you were part of it, and so was Nancy Lopez, who has yeah. long been a mentor of yours, and you've talked about Lorena and Nancy and what they've meant to you. Now you are that face that young girls can look at and see and see themselves in. What does that mean to you to know that a young girl might watch that, whether she's a golfer or not, and be inspired by your story? Yeah, um, that means a lot. Um, 
you know, Nancy and Lorena paved the way for not only women, but just women of color, young Latina girls. And so I feel like now it's my turn to do that. And I am now in a position and am confident enough as a woman and as a Latina woman to take on that role and to um, really just inspire girls that look like me. I know when I came out as a little girl and would watch the LPGA, I just wanted to watch a girl that looked like me, that was, you know, brown and curvy and confident. And, you know, I, I found that on this tour. And I feel like that's what this tour is about. We, we represent so much and there's so many stories that we can as inspire women and young girls around the globe. Roberta, you know, we've got a lot that people can take from Drive On. We talk about it not just being just for young girls, but for everyone to be inspired by these stories. What do you hope people take away from this message and, and from Lizette's piece? You know, there's a popular saying that talent is universal, but opportunity is not. And I think I would just say talent and drive are universal, and opportunity and visibility are not. So this is, this is our contribution. Uh, all we know are our players and our members, but their stories uh, transcend sports and they transcend gender. And I think they really are a shot in the arm. And at the end of the day, Kelly, I'll be very honest with you, we want more people to watch the LPGA. We want more people to support the LPGA. We have got great partners today and great sponsors. There's room for more. And the stronger and richer the LPGA gets, it translates into girls achieving their dreams. So uh, the ability to be part of the process for someone to achieve their dream is probably the most magical and fulfilling responsibility that we have. And we get to see it every day. Do we have any questions that are here in the audience? All right. Well, ladies, first off, Lizette, thank you again for, for being a part of this, for sharing your story. As we've talked about, you were that face. You are that face now that so many young girls can look to, whether they want to be a golfer or a singer or whatever dream they may have. We believe that your story can help inspire them, and we're really excited to showcase that to the world and all of these many stories that we're going to get to with Drive On. So thank you for being a part of it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.